Studio Double. <laughs> Can't grow without some growing pains, you know? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting kind of nervous now. It forced me to go deeper and just cling to God. Here we go. Wow. There's the chair. Something that's popular is where I'll like imitate my dad. And uh, does anybody have a pair of glasses that I can borrow? Just Everybody knows if, they, if you've ever shown your parent a meme or something like that, you'll they'll look at their phone and then just kind of tilt their the glasses in. Okay. Why did Uh huh. Who is this? Like, that, Dad, that's not, that's not the point. That's not the point. It's a joke. It's like reading a comic. You don't need to. You have enough context. Oh, you don't need to ask me questions, because then that. Never mind. That's basically how it happened. So, I did a video like that, and people enjoyed that one too. I was born into a very fortunate upbringing. Growing up with a dad who played in the NBA, won an Olympic gold medal and all these other awards was like, like there was a lot of pressure on my shoulders. I always had to do everything right and be right. I'd say the main things that my dad really expected from me was to be a basketball player and go into business like him. People would always come to me and be like, yo, you're gonna play basketball like your dad. You're gonna do this like your dad. You're gonna be tall like your dad. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm, I'm eight. Can I just eat ice cream and watch TV in peace, please? I, I, I never really wanted to start playing. I just kinda, you know, I was just there. After games, it was always about like correcting mistakes, like what I was doing wrong so that I could be better. But what I heard was like, you are not good enough. I remember one time specifically, I asked him, yo, what did I do well? And he just paused, it was like, uh, it's like, dang, do I even wanna play anymore, for real? I grew up in a Christian household, knew God from a very young age. My perception of him or just my relationship with him, I had to always work to please him. If I wasn't reading scripture and praying and being on time or just doing X, Y, Z, there's always this question in the back of my mind, like, am I enough? Kind of felt like I had to walk on eggshells a lot of time. If I wasn't doing enough, then I wasn't good enough. I was walking through the hallway at my school. And I saw this girl sitting down. She just looked really upset. She had her head in her hands and looked like she was on the verge of tears. I just felt a pull to go sit down and talk to her. I just asked her what's wrong. She ended up opening up to me about like, how she was struggling with depression and just issues with her parents and all these other things. And it was just really weighing on her. And I was able to help make her laugh and shift her perspective. And walking away from the conversation, she was totally uplifted and I was like, I don't really understand what I just did, but whatever it was, I want to do it for a living with as many people as possible. <laughs> I think every father wants their kids to be better than they were, but his desire for me to go into the NBA and like be a successful businessman was, it wasn't making room for me to just do what I really desire to do. When I got to college, I realized I am really on my own here. And what followed was probably the hardest year of my life. I almost got caught up into a cult, actually. That was interesting. I'm not gonna name no names. But uh, long story short, it turned out that it was like this very, it was just manipulative and controlling, like a hierarchy system in the name of discipleship. Like, and I was only involved for like three or four weeks, but I heard other stories of like people who had been involved for two years and they come out and they like just don't want anything to do with God at all. That stuff always like kind of scared me. And it made me just bring up questions in my mind. If somebody, claim to believe in God for years, and then all of a sudden they just walk away from him. How do I know that he really is real? How do I know that this isn't just something that my parents brought me up in? I was just desperate. I was like, God, 
if you're even real, I don't even know if I'm talking to anyone right now. I could be talking into the air, but if you're real, just show me. Some of the scariest things that we have to face are actually like deep within ourselves, the things that we don't really want to deal with. Um, when I was 12 or 13, I, I discovered, I guess, I'm trying to t censor words. It would be cool just saying whatever. So when I was 12 or 13 is when I started struggling with masturbation. And then 17 was when I started watching pornography. I never thought I would. I became addicted to pornography for years. So spring semester of college, I found myself in my room one night just on the floor like crying because I it was like I built this whole foundation under me my entire life. If this foundation is not real, then it's going to crumble and I'm going to come falling down with it. And I was just crying, angry, frustrated. If this is damaging to my relationship with you, if it affects it, then why won't you just take away the desire? But in that moment, I felt like he said to me, I'm not going to take it away, but allow you to go through it so that you can help others who are going through it also. What I came to find out was a pornography addiction is a symptom of a deeper issue. And for me, throughout my entire life, it was just not feeling like I'm good enough. Feeling like I'm not good enough to even go to him because mindsets that I had, feelings of unworthiness, felt like I'm not good enough. I believe I'm not good enough. And so I do things that reflect that. I feel like, oh, I'm already low. Why not just, you know, continue to do it, even though I knew it was wrong. But I felt like I always had to be right and perfect and on point. And if I wasn't, then that says something about my identity, which totally spoke into my relationship with God. God doesn't just lift us up out of our circumstances or trials because if he did, then we wouldn't need him. We wouldn't need to cling to him. We wouldn't be dependent on him. It's God who frees us and that he wants us to always come to him. And we are good enough because of him, in him, in Jesus alone. It started a journey of really going deeper with the Lord. Like, yo, I need to study scripture to really understand healthy, sound doctrine. We honor our parents because we love them, not because we're obligated to. Yo, my father is great to me, I love my mom. Jesus is great to me, I love him, and I wanna serve him. That was like really healing for me after growing up with so much pressure to prove myself as good enough. There was actually one day where somebody recognized him, not for being in the NBA, but because he was my dad. And that's when he was like, oh snap, he's got something going on here. He really just has always wanted me to be as successful as I can be and just use everything that I have to just bring glory and honor to God. Man, God has such a sense of humor. In his presence is fullness of joy. And of course, laughter is a part of that. You think Jesus didn't crack jokes with the disciples? You think he was all just like, I must preach the gospel of the kingdom. No, that's ridiculous. Like, laugh, lighten up a bit. There are plenty of people who have reached out to me and said things like, I was really depressed, I was having a terrible day, or I was thinking about self-harm or even ending their own life. But then I saw your videos and it totally changed my mind and made me realize, like, you know what? Maybe life is worth it. And that's cool. Yeah. I'm Chad Smith, and I am second. <laughs>